Hello YouTube, it has been way too long since my last video and I don't really have any good excuse except for the fact that I've been busy with school uh, but I managed to find some time this week since I don't have any classes to make a video for you guys so we're going to be making a, looking at a tutorial today on how to make patterns in GIMP. And I'm making this tutorial video because I had several people ask about how I made the pattern in, that you can see in the background of this image, which is the, of course, the image from my very first tutorial, the Glossy Metal 3D Text Tutorial, which has actually gotten pretty popular, and that's pretty cool. And if, you, of course, you haven't seen that video already, I'll put a link so you can check it out. And so, yeah, we're going to look at how to make patterns in GIMP, in particular, how to make this pattern that I used in the background. Okay, so what we want to do to get started is just make a new image. We want to make this 20 by 20 pixels, so go ahead and just click OK. This is a very small canvas, so we're going to do a zoom in on that to make it larger. So what we're going to do next is get our rectangle select tool and drag out a square in the top left corner of our image. We want this to be 6 by 6 pixels, so you can look over here in your tool options and make sure it says exactly 6 by 6. Okay, so once we have our square selection, then we want to get our blend tool, also known as the gradient tool, and make sure you have your default black and white foreground and background colors and all your default settings for the gradient. And then click down at the, towards the bottom of, of your square and drag to the top and you want to hold down the control key to help it stay perfectly vertical. And then so let go and we get our gradient like this. Next we want to add a little uh, outline sort of thing to this tile. So we're going to get our pencil tool, not the paintbrush tool, the pencil tool, and we want to make sure we have this pixel one by one square brush selected. Now this is just a little tiny dot that you can find next to this uh, pepper brush. So make sure you have this pixel brush selected. And you want your foreground color to be black. And then you want to go down halfway on the side of the square and draw a line around this bottom edge of that square. Now we're going to do the same thing on the top by using white. So go ahead and flip the foreground color to white and draw a white line around the top like this. Now this is one of our tiles for the pattern. That's all finished. Now all we need to do is um, add the effect which makes the pattern appear so that the tiles are kind of offset from each other so that the, the uh, adjacent columns aren't perfectly in line with each other. They're kind of offset half, uh, half the length of one tile so that it gives a kind of staggered appearance to the pattern. So the way we're going to do that is, uh, well, first of all, hopefully you still have this square selection around your um, tile. So then you want to go to Edit, Copy, or you can use the shortcut Control-C, and then Edit, Paste, or you can use the shortcut Control-V. And then we still have the paint, this pencil tool active, so I'm going to go ahead and change my Rectangle Select tool. Now we have a um, copy of the tile that's pasted directly over top of the previous tile, so if you use your rectangle select tool, you can just click on that and move this copy over. Now we don't want it to be perfectly aligned. As I said, we want to create this offset staggered appearance. So we're going to move this tile down half the length of one tile. And we're going to go ahead and paste this tile again by doing control V, the shortcut. And we're going to move this second copy up like this. So that now uh, we have one tile that's halfway up and one tile that's halfway down from the previous tile. Now if you still have your rectangle select tool active then you should be able you should notice that when you move the uh, cursor outside of your selected area you should get this little icon on your cursor that has an anchor. So you want to go ahead and click then when that appears to anchor the selection onto the layer. And um, if that doesn't work for some reason you can always go to layer anchor layer right here. Okay so now this pattern is complete so just get your crop tool we have some excess um, stuff here that we don't need and you just want to drag out uh, a rectangle like this which covers the whole first tile and these two half pieces of the, these other two tiles. Then just click inside the rectangle to finalize your crop and for some reason, I don't know why GIMP does this, but it se doesn't seem to um, always update the display immediately when I crop it. But you can see there just appear but if that doesn't work for some reason if the same thing happens to you you can like sometimes zoom in and then zoom back out and it'll fix itself so in order to save this as a pattern that you can actually use in GIMP first of all you need to know where to save your patterns 
for any computer, no matter which operating system you're using, this is how you can find out where to save your patterns in GIMP. So when you go to Edit, Preferences, and you should get this window that pops up and has all this stuff. It looks kind of confusing at first. You just want to come over to this side where it says Folders, and you want to expand this by clicking that little plus icon. Now you can scroll down, and you see here we have brushes, patterns, palettes, gradients, fonts, all this stuff that you can add to GIMP. So if you're ever not sure where to put a new brush that you just downloaded, you can come here to see how, where to put the brushes. And same thing for patterns, and that's what we're doing right now. So go ahead and just click on patterns, and then over here, you'll have a list which will show all of the file locations where GIMP will automatically look for your patterns. This is the place you want to go to put your patterns um, so that GIMP will recognize them and be able to use them. The same thing for brushes. If you want, if you download a new brush and you want to know where to put it, just come to this, this uh, preferences window, come down here to brushes, and then this tells you exactly where you want to put your brushes so that GIMP will automatically detect them. Okay, so this is saying we want to go to your username. This is for Windows Vista. It's probably the same for Windows 7 and probably similar for Macs and Linux also. But you want to go to your username folder, then this GIMP 2.6 folder, and then patterns. Pretty simple. So go ahead and just close out of this by clicking OK. We want to go to File, Save As. And so we want to navigate to that location that the Preferences window just told us about. So we're going to go, I'm going to go to my username, which is right here, and then GIMP 2.6, and then down here to Patterns. So I need to scroll down a little bit, and there we go, Patterns. And you can see the same thing. Um, the Brushes folder was up here, and we have Gradients, etc. So we're just going to go into our Patterns folder. I already have a couple patterns right here, and we're going to save this new pattern by just giving it a name. I'm going to call it this just tiles. And in order to make it work as a pattern in GIMP, you need to type .pat, which is the file type for uh, GIMP patterns. And then just click Save. And then, of course, you'll get this little window that pops up, and this is asking you what do you want to call the pattern, um, like what name do you want to appear inside GIMP when you're using the pattern. So I would usually just call the same thing that you gave as its file name, so just like tiles. And um, I'm going to go ahead and also add this little thing at the beginning, just an A with an underscore, because the, the patterns are listed in alphabetical order, and so I want this just to appear at the beginning so it's easier for me to find, but you don't need that. And just press Save. So then you want to go to your Patterns dialog box, which for me is down here with all these other dialog boxes, but I have my GIMP uh, customized a little differently, so you might not have that already. If you don't have this Patterns dialog box, you can go to Windows, Dockable Dialogs, Patterns, down here, and just click on that and it should pop up, but mine's already over here. So what you want to do is come down to the bottom and click this Refresh button, which will refresh your patterns. And you should see immediately that your new pattern will appear. And there we go. So just click on that pattern to select it. Now to actually use this pattern, well, first of all, we can go ahead and close our pattern file because we're done with it. And we want to create a new image to test out the pattern. So I'm going to make this a little bigger so that we can actually see the pattern repeating. Let's just make this like 300 by 300 pixels, just something big enough to test this out. You want to get your paint bucket fill tool. And you want to change this field type to pattern fill, and you can see our pattern is already right there selected since we chose it down here in our patterns dialog box. And all you need to do is click in your canvas, and there you go. You can see exactly how it fills in and it repeats the tiles in that kind of staggered offset um, fashion. But yeah, that's how I made this pattern, guys, and I uh, hope you learned something. And I'm not sure when my next video will be, hopefully not too long. But yeah, thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time.